Good morning. Welcome to episode number 21 of the Zoomtown Experiment. In this episode, we're going to pretty much wrap up the mechanical and electrical assembly of our first Zoomy, our prototype. Now, before we get into that, I just want to review a little bit of what we covered in the last episode, and that was to do with the power deck or the power distribution area. We've got all of that assembled, and then prior to that would have been the battery uh, deck where we got the 18650 cells. Prior to that would have been the motor drive, motors and motor drive deck at the very base of the system. And of course, also the sensor bracket that holds all of the wonderful little sensors for our Zoomy. Before we get any further, let's take a quick overview of what we're going to cover in this episode because it's going to cover a lot of content, but I'm not going to bore you with two hours of me soldering together components and so forth. A lot of it will be fast forward. We're going to start by populating the logic circuit board. That's a, a custom circuit board that uh, will contain all the logic, the Raspberry Pi Pico W in our case. And it'll be the connection point for all of the sensors and motor drive. Then we're going to complete the wiring on the powertrain deck. The powertrain is all the way at the bottom of the Zoomy, and we've got to get wires connected to the power drive or the motor drive, as well as the motors. Then we're going to work on our sensor bracket that contains all the sensors. We'll get those run up toward the top of the Zoomy for final assembly. Then we're going to complete the wiring of the power distribution deck, and that'll just be soldering on a few ends to wires, and we can wrap that part up. Finally, we're going to turn on the power using uh, a bench power supply. And what that does is it gives me a lot more control and ability to observe how the device is powering up and, of course, I can be checking voltages of the three power supplies. Then we're going to add in the Raspberry Pi Pico, again powering it up with the bench supply. And the bench supply tells me current draw and everything else. So, again, it's a very uh, safe way to power up systems. Finally, we're going to write a simple test program to flash the bicolor LEDs that are on the logic control deck, just to make sure everything is functional in that regard. We'll then replace the bench power supply with a battery, the dual 18650 cells, and power up the system again, and double check voltages, as well as make sure no magic smoke comes out of the system anywhere. And that'll end phase one of the Zoom Town experiment, which was selecting all the components and getting them electrically and mechanically assembled. Then we're going to cover what will be coming up in phase two of the Zoom Town experiment. And that should pretty well cover everything we want to go over in this particular episode. It is a transitional episode, and we've got to wrap up a lot of loose ends and so forth. And again, I won't bore you with making you watch two hours of me soldering and assembling. We'll do a little voiceover commentary on the fast-forward videos of a lot of that action. As you recall, this is about where we left off. Uh, it's changed a little bit. Uh, don't have the sensor bracket on here because we didn't want that in the way for some of the assembly. Uh, the motors are not wired up to the motor drive. So there's going to be a few things changing here real quick. I'll have to disassemble all this, solder wires on the motor, uh, get those connected to the motor drive, wire up the motor drive all the way up to the logic board and to the power supply deck. We can get the battery deck reassembled, the power deck reassembled, cut off some wires that don't need to be as long. Then we're going to go through, assemble this, solder it all together, and that'll definitely be fast forward. We can mount that on top of the Zoomy, get all the wires connected to that, check for power, 
and then finally put on our Pico, check for power, and test a little bit of logic. As you can see, this is a prototype PCB made here in the shop. Uh, once we get it all worked out, I'll probably have these uh, made by one of the services because soldering up this sort of circuit board is a little more difficult than one with a solder mask, and I haven't really found a reliable way to do solder masks on homemade PCBs. But the soldering process, like any other, you're going to start out uh, generally with the short components first, resistors, and then headers. I will go through then and get uh, the LEDs on and jumper wires, add in the uh, female headers for where we'll put the Raspberry Pi Pico W, and then our screw terminals. All of that's going to take probably in the neighborhood of an hour or two, so uh, we'll just turn on the tunes and finish up the rest of it listening to some music. With the logic board all done, and we're ready to move on to our back all the way down our powertrain deck where the wheels are mounted, the motors, power supply, and our motor drive. Now we have to complete all the wiring here. That will entail wiring a couple of leads onto the back of the motors, and I'll be using uh, DuPont jumpers for that. Those will pass up through this hole and connect over here. I also need to get a jumper from our power supply to our motor drive board, and then all the control wires that go all the way up to the logic control deck way up here for that, so that we can connect the motor drive to the logic control deck. So the, that one I got to kind of guess on the length, but I got a good idea. The rest I can kind of fit as we go along. So with that, I'm going to dive right in on all that assembly. Working from the bottom up, I'm going to add in jumper wires where needed, uh, usually using the pre-made uh, inexpensive jumper wires with the DuPont connectors on both ends. In this case, it's all female to female. And these are the inexpensive ones, which are super stiff, and they make it Far more difficult than this really needs to be, but in truth, I'm too lazy to go through and crimp on a bunch of ends with silicone jacketed wire uh, where they would be much more flexible. But it's just a tedious process. I'll have to solder on wires where needed, crimp on a couple of ends, and just work through it step by step, bottom up, all the way to the top. And, yeah, it looks awful. There's an awful lot of wires here. I'm not real happy with it, but it's very difficult to try to get this more minimalistic uh, by eliminating wires, etc. I just don't have the room to do it, and nor do I have the patience to try, try to do any surface mount soldering where I could, instead of using modules, go right for uh, the actual IC chips and uh, uh, other associated components. So this is what it's going to look like. And of course, this is in the raw form. All this will be covered up by a body. 
and uh, we'll show you that a little bit later in this video. I've got a couple of crude ones that are almost acceptable, but I've got to really work on the 3D printing for them. So from here, next up, we're going to start applying power and see what's going to happen. All right, let me show you what we got going here. Uh, these leads go back to one of my bench power supplies. And I've got them connected to the terminals for our battery compartment without the 18650 cells in there. That way I can very carefully monitor current draw and uh, control things and not have to worry about wrecking things, or at least giving myself a chance to stop things. I'm going to turn the power switch in the off position. I have my VOM here, if they still call them volt ohm meters, and uh, I'm just going to turn up my voltage on my power supply. I'm up at about 6.2 volts. Let me see what I'm getting at this one. I've got nothing there. That's a very bad sign. And let me check here. And I've got nothing there. Oh, you know why? you got to turn on that power. Now this yellow LED is our power indicator. Oh, that looks good. Now we've got power. It's very dim, but at this point I'm only at 6.1 volts going into the whole system. Let's see what we got for voltages. Oh, that's better. 3.348. This one should be 5. Uh-oh. No. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Yes, this one is also 3.3. This is the input, and this is an output. Back here is the 5 volts. So if I go like that and like that, and we are getting 5.1 volts. I'd say that's looking pretty reasonable. I don't know if there's really a place. And you know what? Uh, okay, I've got a lead off here, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but this DuPont connector came off of that one from all my manhandling. So I'm going to power it off. Pull that back a little bit and reattach that. And I think I'll need needle nose to get that all manipulated where I need it. There we go. And that's the high voltage or this battery, essentially the cell voltage going into the power supply for the motor. So now what I want to do is find that spot again and I can try to get a voltage reading here. Okay, that's 5.1. I'm going to turn my bench supply up to about seven and a half volts, which will be close to what we're going to get out of the dual 18650 cells. Oh, come on. Having a difficult time. Six and a half volts. Okay. It's right in the neighborhood. It's kind of floating around a little bit. I think I know why. There's nothing commanding the motor to do anything at this time. And over here, we should get the same voltage as coming from the bench power supply. Seven and a half volts. So all around, my voltages are very close to where I want them. Next up, I will probably put the Pico in it. We'll power that up, see what we can do. I just want to get these two marker LEDs to blink as a test. And then to wrap it up, I think I'll throw the, uh, the uh, batteries in it, and we'll see what happens with that to make sure all works out well. Well, we got it all together, and 
uh, I already powered it on and I ran into a very long diagnostics process. There is something wrong with this connector working with my time of flight sensor. So rather than delay the video, I'm going to pull that guy aside and then we'll go ahead with our further tests to get our blinking going on the front rear marker lights. And we'll be running off of both the PC through Thani. I'll be uh, plugging in. And then I got my external power supply uh, providing power on that. And they've got a common ground so that everything behaves properly. So we've got a very simple program here. I'm not really going to go into any detail on it. I'm just going to assign a few variables uh, that are pins that control the bicolor LEDs. Uh, we're going to go into a loop that will turn on the red portion, sleep for a half a second, turn on the green portion, sleep for a half a second, and then repeat a bunch of times. And let's see, we're going to have to do a stop. We'll run it. And it's saying that it's running down here, and sure enough, our LEDs are doing exactly as they're supposed to. The camera's probably not picking up the green color, uh, maybe not even the red color. Often this camera will make uh, LED colors all look white. But that verifies a lot for the Zoomy. Uh, one that uh, all the systems, with the exception of the one I've discovered, is not functioning correctly. There's no dead shorts, no major problems, and so forth. So I've got one more test I want to do. And that's to throw in a couple 18650 cells, power it back up again, run the same test. And then from there, off camera and in between now and our next uh, video, I'll go through and figure out what's wrong with that time of flight sensor. Most likely I've got a, a cable twist in there somewhere, something silly like that. So we'll get ready for this next test now. This will be, uh, these are the cells, 18650 cells. And the uh, negative side will go against the spring component on the inside of our compartment. And then the positive side of the cell goes against the, the fixed portion, springs and then fixed portions. And then this is almost a two-handed guy here. So now what I'll do is I'm going to push on this in. And then slide my little keeper in there. And you can see that this plate protrudes up above this deck surface. And then this little keeper slides down in a slot. Spring tension holds everything together. Now I'm going to turn it on without anything hooked to it. Uh, no sparks, no smoke. I'm okay with that. We're going to plug it back in. Get my code running here. And the LEDs will blank, uh, but my power's currently off. I'm going to turn it on. And now the LEDs are a little more bright. Uh, we've got a little more power from uh, the 18650 cells. That'll bring the voltages up a little bit. I'll go through, double check all my voltages and so forth. And from there, I think we're ready to move on to the next phase, phase number two. In phase number two, step by step or incrementally, we're going to start implementing the code. Now, of course, the first phase or four first steps in that is get a sensor up and running and then start working on the framework for all of the code and uh, build it up block by block. That's my favorite way of doing projects like this. There's a lot of unknowns, and I'm going to be doing uh, the code uh, framework, so to speak, in a manner I've tried before unsuccessfully a couple of times, and it works with uh, deterministic loot. And uh, haven't had good success with it, but I thought, you know, let, let's give it another try. This is the latest version of the body. You can see that the fenders, so to speak, are clearanced out. I, I know I've got trouble in this area yet with the, uh, the wires and so forth. On the back, hopefully these this will line up with the USB port. That'll line up with our LED. 
And this opening will give us access to our momentary switch, our power switch, and LED. And if we come around to the front, this will be where the time of flight sensor, the one that's giving me grief right now, that's how it'll see outside the case. And then that little hole will be for the front marker light. Now, as you can kind of get an idea, these cables all got to bend over. And these cables have to kind of bend in like that and not hit the tires. And that's going to be a lot of the fun I got to work through on the mechanical design in the coming weeks as well. So I'm just going to kind of push those over. Hopefully they'll stay there a little bit. This goes this way. And we'll kind of slide it over. And I can see already it's a bit too tight of a fit. but And right here is where I'm going to be binding up. So I've got to do something with that. Have to widen the body a little bit more so that these wires can pass through and maybe raise up the fender area, but that'll give you kind of a rough idea what this whole thing's going to look like when we move on and start testing. Well, the bodies will stay off during the initial testing. All that's going to do is just get in the way of everything that we're trying to accomplish. With that, we'll wrap up this video and uh, in, let's see, episode number 22, which will be next week, We'll start working on the software development, unless any more mechanical electrical issues kind of get in the way. But I think we're in pretty good shape. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and thanks for watching.